Hello everyone, it's Queen Beam. I'm back to you with another video. This video is an update pertaining to the Mega Stone ruling by the Texas judge. It has been confirmed that the Texas judge appointed by Trump ruled that the FDA improperly approved the abortion pill mega Stone more than 20 years ago after his ruling a judge in Washington state issued a ruling directing federal authorities did not make any changes in the mega Pristine access in which 17 states with Democratic Attorney Generals filed a lawsuit blocking the FDA pulling Meta Pristin off the market. They include Arizona, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Illinois, Michigan, Nevada, Oregon, Rhode Island, Maine, Maryland, Hawaii, Minnesota, Pennsylvania, Vermont, New Mexico, Washington State, and Washington, D.C., which led to scouts stating that Meta Pristone will remain throughout the USA while the lawsuit over its approval and use working through the appeal process. The case now travels to the Fifth Circuit with a three-judge panel which will hold hearing on May 17, 2023 and issue another decision. It should be noted that there is no deadline for the Fifth Circuit to rule. After Scottis' ruling, Vice President Kamala Harris released a statement in which I will read in part, the court's announcement preserves access to Meta Pristone, a safe and effective medication that was approved by the FDA more than two decades ago. Our administration will not waver in our commitment to preserving access to essential medication and defending the FDA's ability to approve safe and effective drugs. And in ending, she stated, the president and I will continue to fight to protect a woman's freedom to make decisions about her own body and access to reproductive health care, including medication abortion. No one should stand between a woman and her doctor. Now you will watch this brief clip from the readout and I will be back with my final commentary. Lay it out for us. What does this ruling mean? You're being generous by saying that I've had a chance to read it. I've had a chance to skim it. But what this yeah. ruling means is no less than a total disaster for America's women and girls. And here's why, Joy. The plaintiffs in this case, they asked for an order that would require the FDA to withdraw or suspend its approval of Mifepristone. And according to people who are expert in FDA law, that's a process that likely would have taken several months, just given the way that the regulatory framework for the FDA works. Instead, 
said what just Kazmarek did here was stay the FDA's approval of mifepristone in 2000. And if you're asking yourself, what does that mean? It means it essentially freezes the world for the FDA before that September 2000 approval. It's as if they never approved mifepristone in the first place. Now, he's put a pause on his order for seven days to give the FDA, represented by the Department of Justice, a chance to appeal it. But if this ruling sticks, this means a world in which mifepristone is likely not available throughout the United States, in which medication abortion is available only through misoprostol. That's the other of the two drugs in the regimen. That's a much more painful process. It's also laden with more risks than both drugs combined. And we're going to live in a world that is increasingly coming closer and closer to the one that Margaret Atwood imagined in The Handmaid's Tale. I never thought that I would see today happen, much less last June happen. And the thing that, you know, makes this so outrageous is that Republicans have long made the argument that their problem with Roe v. Wade is that it nationalized an issue that they felt belonged in the states, that they thought each little laboratory of democracy ought to be able to make its own rules for abortion, states' rights. But what this judge has done is to say no. California can't make its own decisions. This drug is illegal in California. It's illegal in New York. It's illegal in Michigan that just won back it, the right for women to have control over their own bodies. Illegal in Kansas, that where there was a referendum in which people were asked, do you want to codify abortion rights? They said overwhelmingly, yes, we do. This judge has now overruled it. Um, it this, just from a federalism standpoint, is right. it really puts the lie, doesn't it, to what the right has always said they wanted. What they want is a national ban on abortion. This is a step toward that. That's exactly right. And they won't stop until they get to fetal personhood. I'm really convinced of that. Joy, this is anti-federalist in two ways. It's anti-federalist because the Dobbs decision, as you recognize, said it was time to take the issue of abortion out of the courts and return it to the people's elected representatives. And clearly, the decision that Judge Kaczmarek has made today makes that impossible for people who live in staunchly pro-choice states like California and Vermont, but also in places like Kansas and Michigan and Kentucky. That's one way in which it's anti-federalist. The other way in which it's anti-federalist is, of course, with respect to the regulation of drugs, which is something that's always been left to Congress to decide and to the FDA. There was an argument that could have been made here that FDA regulations preempt state law where it comes to the regulation of medications, whether it's for abortion or for chemotherapy, that the FDA reigns supreme. That's an argument that affirmatively could have been made by the Department of Justice and wasn't, and is partially why we find ourselves here and why I am so frustrated and impassioned right now in talking about this ruling. Now, let's talk about the pragmatic uh, impact of this. If the FDA's approval is stayed, does that make it illegal to possess or sell or purchase mifepristone? No, but, and here's what I'll say, the Comstock Act, which is a federal statute that's on the books, makes it illegal to, to basically send abortifacients or drugs that cause abortion through the mail. The Biden administration has a policy issued by the Department of Justice that says, essentially, we don't intend to enforce the Comstock Act. But that law is still on the books. It was one of the bases, for example, through which more than 20 state attorneys general threatened Walgreens when they announced that they were going to participate with the FDA in making medication abortion available through retail pharmacies. So there is a law on the book that makes it unlawful to send mifepristone, misoprostol through the mail. That the Biden administration isn't going to enforce it doesn't mean that it won't be enforced by a future president if it's not taken off the books by Congress. One more question, and I'm going to bring in Alexis Miguel Johnson in a minute, but I do want to ask you one more question. Um, we know that the Supreme Court six, the six uh, right wing, uh, the right wingers in the majority on the Supreme Court, one of them, Clarence Thomas, with all his other ethical problems, has presaged that he would like to get a case that would also make um, they would also make uh, birth control illegal. And we know that that was uh, another Supreme Court ruling that he would like to get back, um, along with uh, rulings on uh, the rights of gay Americans um, to live their lives as well. Could the same kind of construct that we just saw here, a lawsuit that goes to a far right wing judge, end up making birth control illegal? Could they use the same tactic? Uh, I could see that happening here. And one of the things that they're going to do is try to pit 
two constitutional rights against one another. So for example, while the right to contraception is rooted in the right to privacy, that's a long-standing Supreme Court precedent, have that bump up against, for example, religious freedom, which is what they've used in a number of these cases where they're trying to erode LGBTQ rights. The other way, Joy, that I think that they could effectuate that is by claiming the mantle of parental rights. There is a long line of Supreme Court cases that say parents have the right to raise their children in the way that they see fit. You see that parental rights framing, undergirding a number of really pernicious statutes around the around the country, everything from CRT to gender affirming health care to now abortion too. Judge Kasmerick has issued one of those rulings saying that Texas parents have a right to prevent their kids without consent from accessing oral contraceptives, for example, through the federally funded um, family planning grant program. So I can see a situation where through parental rights or through religious freedom, they're going to attack birth control next. And I think it's coming. While right. we wait for the Fifth Circuit's ruling and while this needed medication is on shelves for now, it would be foolish not to address the reason why we are here. It is because of white women's continuous support of the guardians of Putin. Back in 2020, 55% of white women supported the twice impeached one-term grifter, now indicted former President Trump. For 70 something plus years, your continued support of this party has led to this very moment. We have a current SCOTUS's spouse aiding in stripping our democracy as we know it. And do not be fooled. Once this is stripped away, Everything that fellow Americans have fought and died for would have been for nothing. It is time that we address the continued support of a party that does not even see you. And now because of your continuous support, Everyone ultimately has to pay the price, but be mindful because as the saying goes, and then they came for me and no one was left to speak up for me. The time for engagement begins now, not in 2024, but today as our rights are being stripped away from our very eyes. Voting is critical, not only on the local level, but on the state and the federal levels alike. And as always, elections have consequences. Elections matter. Thank you for watching. And as always, please be safe out here and I will see you in the next video.